welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make a beautiful and elegant and so delicious main course meal. Um, it's my chicken with shallots that are gonna be roasted in the oven. The chicken is going to be stuffed under the skin with my roasted, my spicy roasted red pepper dip, also known as the Greek tiro kafteri. It's gonna be out of this world delicious, very simple to put together, ready all in one pan. It's gonna all be ready in one pan in just under two hours. We're gonna go over the first step so we can get started. So now in my pan right here, I have shallots. So I'm making two chickens today, but you can cut everything, all the ingredients in half to make one roast chicken. But I have some shallots here that I've peeled and the bigger ones, I just cut them in half. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to begin roasting them by drizzling them first with a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit. I'm gonna give them a head start in the oven so they can get slightly caramelized. And then I'm just gonna season them with a little bit of salt just to bring out their delicious flavor. And I'm just gonna to toss them so they're all coated. So I'm gonna be roasting two chickens today, but like I said, you can cut this recipe in half and do it with one chicken. That's perfectly fine, but I always like to have uh, leftovers. If you have roasted chicken in the refrigerator ready, you can use it for lunch when you're on the go. You can make salads with it, chicken salad, put it in soup, so many things. But about the sauce that we're gonna be stuffing our chicken with. This is roasted red pepper sauce. Really, all I did was I put the ingredients in a food processor. All I did was I combined feta cheese, ricotta cheese, Greek yogurt, some extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of freshly squeezed lemon juice, some roasted red peppers. You could do two to four large red peppers, a little bit of salt and pepper, and a heavy heaping pinch of uh, crushed red pepper flakes, but you can put as much as you want in there. I just processed it in the food processor until it was really nice and smooth. Then I went in and I tasted it and I adjusted the seasoning. I added a little bit more salt and then just like that, it's ready to go. This is a really big batch. So the holiday season is upon us and we're getting together all the time. In my house, I have an open door policy and we have guests in a, guests visiting all the time. So I like to have this on hand. This dip stays fresh in your refrigerator up to a week or maybe even a little bit more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the dip aside and there are two components to um, marinating this chicken. There's the red pepper dip, then there's the herb butter marinade that I always make. So I have a stick of melted salted butter over here and I'm going to grate four cloves of garlic, two for each chicken. And there's gonna be garlic inside the chicken as well. But I'm just gonna grate these cloves in my melted butter with my microplane. So to that, I'm gonna add the zest of a lemon. We're gonna use the juice and the zest, but anytime you're zesting lemon, you wanna, anytime you're juicing lemon and you need the zest, you wanna zest first and juice second. And always zest the shiny part. When you get to the white part, do not zest that because that's really bitter. Add the juice, the lemon juice to the butter. Then I'm just gonna season it with a little bit more salt and some freshly cracked black pepper and the herb butter is ready to flavor our chicken. One more thing that I forgot in my herb, but in my herb butter is some fresh rosemary. Now I have rosemary here, you can use thyme or oregano. A little bit of rosemary goes a very long way. So we're not gonna use the stem because the stem is very tough. Just the aromatic leaves. Perfect, we're just gonna add this chopped rosemary to our butter, give it a nice mix, and now it's ready. Now it's time to start seasoning the chicken. So I like to season the chicken throughout. I season inside the cavity, underneath the skin, and on top to ensure a very, very flavorful chicken. Now we're gonna begin with inside the cavity. Now, anytime you're handling poultry, you wanna make sure you, ha you have one hand that touches the chicken and the other hand that touches the seasoning so that way there's no cross-contamination. So inside the cavity, I'm gonna season with salt. Let's do both sides, both chickens. Some cumin powder because cumin gives that really nice earthy, nice flavor and it really pairs very well with poultry. So we're gonna put cumin powder, and it's up to you, but I like um, spicy, a little bit of spice in my life, so I'm gonna add some crushed red pepper flakes. If you don't want them, you can go ahead and do black pepper instead. You could do both too, it's up to you. 
That's it. And then we have some whole peeled garlic cloves here. I'm going to put a bunch, about five or six in one, and same thing in the other. We have lots and lots of flavor inside. Now it's time to go underneath the skin. I went in with my finger, you could do, do this with a spoon too, and just release the skin from the breast so that we create a really nice pocket to hold all of the marinade. So now I'm going to take some of this herbed butter and I'm going to put a tablespoon under each uh, part, of, on top of each part of the breast underneath the skin. So we're not gonna use all this red pepper sauce for our chicken. I'm gonna use the rest to serve it with the chicken once it's baked. But to marinate it, I'm just gonna take some out in a separate, in a separate bowl so that way this doesn't get contaminated in any, any way. You're gonna need about three quarters to a cup full for each uh, chicken breast. And I like to put it in a separate bowl just so that way I make sure that I don't accidentally put anything that has touched the chicken in that fresh, clean sauce. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna liberally, very liberally, stuff this red pepper sauce underneath the skin of the chicken. Now, try to get it on, the, um, on top of the breast and also on the drumstick so you can get lots and lots of flavor throughout the chicken. These shallots smell fantastic. They haven't browned at all, but they did start to soften up in there because they were cooking for almost 15 minutes. Okay, so before we transport our chickens into our other Pan. I'm just going to tie the legs with some kitchen twine. Nothing fancy, you're just tying them together any which way you'd like. <laughs> so now I'm just going to push the shallots to the side just to make room for the chicken to go in. Now before I put them in, I'm just going to tuck the wings underneath the chicken breast so that way they brown evenly. Now we're gonna put the rest of the marinade, the rest of the herb butter on top of the chicken. And the reason I didn't do this in the sheet pan that it was on before was because I wanted all of these to, whatever drips off, to drip into the bottom of the pan so that way the flavor remains in the pan because um, you're gonna, it's gonna create a beautiful sauce at the end and you don't wanna miss any of that delicious flavor or you don't want any of it to go in the garbage or to get washed away. So all of this luscious butter is on top. Now I'm gonna season it with some salt and a little bit of black pepper. So I'm gonna reduce my oven's temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna bake these on the center rack uncovered for an hour and 30 minutes, or until a meat thermometer that's inserted in the thickest part of the chicken registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as they come out. So the roasted chicken and shallots is ready. I've placed it on a plate and it's resting for a little bit. Once you take it out of the oven, make sure to let it rest for at least 15, 20 minutes so the juices redistribute and it stays juicy and, the, and it doesn't dry out. Now, if you're only making one, I've made it over and over again and it takes, an, in an hour and a half, depending on your oven of course, the chicken is usually cooked. Now when you put more things in the oven, the temperature drops and it takes a little bit longer. So it took about two hours for both of these chickens roasting in the same pan to be ready. So just keep that in mind when you're baking and if you have a meat thermometer, it comes in really handy when you're baking more than one meat or just a big, um, a big piece of meat or something that's bigger. Use the uh, meat thermometer and for chicken, when, once it registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit, then you know it's ready. Take it out, let it rest, and then you'll be good to go. Now, for, as for the gravy, there are, gonna, there are gonna be lots of juices in the pan. Just You could either pour it directly into a gravy boat like I did, or you can turn it into a gravy by um, melting some butter, over a stove top, over medium heat, once it, once it melts, add a little bit of flour into it, cook the flour down like a roux, you know, we've done gravy so many times, and then you add the liquid to it, and you cook it until it thickens um, to your liking, and you could season it whichever which way you want. You could add some more lemon to it, a little bit of salt and pepper, and you're good to go. I make an amazing uh, turkey gravy, and you can just follow that same recipe. It's on my turkey video and you could just make that gravy thicker if you want. But honestly, this recipe has so much flavor because of the herb butter and then the cheese that's inside. I cannot wait 
to show you what it looks like. So what I'm trying to say is that you really don't need to thicken the gravy and do that extra step. It's just totally up to you. It depends what you're serving it for and to who you're serving it for and what they like. So the remaining roasted red pepper feta dip, I just put in a bowl and I'm gonna serve it alongside this. This is such a delicious meal, you guys. Serve this with some roasted potatoes, with some toasted bread, and then you and a nice salad and you have an elegant meal that people are going to just love. I'm gonna cut into this now and take a little piece out and put it in my plate so I can show you what it looks like on the inside. The meat just falls off the bone. And let me just show you these pockets of cheese, just how yummy does that look? Look at that. Look at that, there's some of that feta cheese dip on top. I'm just gonna put it onto my plate. I have some shallots on it. The shallots are just really like melting with goodness. And now the best part of making these videos for you guys, I have to make sure that it's good enough to serve. Mm. Delicious, I mean, I need to get a shallot. Mmm. They're caramelized and soft, and they have kind of like the flavor that Stifado has. Stifado is a, is a Greek beef stew with shallots. This is to die for. If you cannot find shallots in your supermarket, go ahead and use any onion you have. Just quarter it. That's fine. You can use pearl onions in this recipe too. This flavor combination, you guys, is just out of this world, delicious and amazing. Your guests are gonna love it. If you don't wanna roast your ordinary turkey and roast beef for your holiday dinner, for your next special event, go ahead and roast some chicken with shallots and your guests are gonna thank you and love every single bite of it. The recipe, as always, is on the website, DemetriusDishes.com and in the description box down below. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.